This is my ninth lecture about the course of uh, nanophysics and technology having the course code of uh, PHY445. Uh, the title of my today lecture is Electron Microscopy. I have divided my lecture into four parts mainly. The first part we will discuss why we need electron microscopy as we have already optical microscope. Why there is in there is a need of uh, electron microscopy. In the second part we will elaborate the something about the optical microscopy. Further discussion will be about scanning electron microscopy and at the end we will discuss something about the transmission mi electron microscopy. Uh, the first thing or the first part of the lecture is why we need electron microscopy. Uh, there is a general rule that is called Rayleigh's criteria that uh, the image of an aperture exposed to light will be larger than the diameter of the aperture due to due to the due to, due to diffraction. And the del x here that is actually over here, del x is over here, alpha the angle is over here. This uh, del x, uh, the value of del x should be around uh, 0 0.6 lambda divided by sine alpha where alpha is over here so if we modify this equation to find out the resolution of light or optical microscope that it can be modified by the uh, according to the equation of Abe and that is uh, define the resolution of any uh, microscope and the D which is called as the resolution that is equal to uh, 0.6 lambda divided by n sine alpha and that is equal to 0 0.6 lambda and a that is called as a numerical aperture so if you want to find out the resolution of something if the, uh, there are two points uh, like object and it will be separable if the distance is larger than del x if the distance between the two objects is larger than del x then it will be separable and which corresponds at pro approximately uh, in the light microscope that will be equal to 0 0.6 multiply by here the wavelength wavelength is actually 400 nanometer that is uh, the light of uh, violet i mean the wavelength of uh, light violet color because this comes in the visible spectrum uh, actually the visible spectrum stores from around 400 to 700 nanometer so it is from around 400 nanometer divided by 1 over 2 is equal to 200 nanometer so here we can see the separation uh, if if the objects have the distance like this so these objects are separable from each other if it is identical just like we are observing stars by telescope or something else or maybe two small object by optical microscope and similarly if it is very close to each other so it is just separable this is the distance between the, them and if it is very close compared to the second one so it is not separable and we cannot distinguish it from each other so how we can move towards the optical microscope and how we can uh, calculate the resolution of optical microscope we have some obstacle that the resolution of optical microscope could not be greater than less than some i mean some some particular value is actually means is so it's, uh, d is around equal uh, is is around around about 0 0.6 lambda divided by n sine alpha is equal to 0 0.6 lambda divided by n a n a is actually numerical aperture so it sh its value should not be increased beyond one so we have some problems or some technical obstacles that prevent us from using the wavelength below below 400 nanometer and that is why the resolution of optical microscope is limited if we use ultraviolet whose wavelength is less than the visible light that comes around 300 nanometer so what will happen we need special lenses for the for the detection of ultraviolet light and the modification results in around maximum twofold improvement in the resolution if we use some other radiation like uh, uh, more that is uh, the x-rays but it can it's very difficult to focus the axis with lenses and uh, special fresnel fresnel zones plates or diffraction plates are required for focusing x-rays and the other part other problem with the x-ray is that that the generation of x-ray and the construction of the x-ray microscope is comparatively costly 
so what what are the actually advantages and disadvantages of optical microscope the first advantage of optical microscope is that the direct imaging with no need of sample pretreatment there is no uh, i mean is uh, no there is no sample pretreatment to prepare for the optical microscope the only microscope for real i mean it is actually the only microscope for real c c color imaging what we are doing in daily life is very quick first because we don't need to uh, prepare the sample for it all type of sample can be checked by it or it can be uh, we can take the photo or images of the all, all kind of samples uh, with that particular resolution is uh, from from gas liquid or solid any type of systems and is it is easy to be integrated with digital camera system for data storage and analysis so it has some disadvantages as well and the first and the main disadvantage of the optical microscope is the low resolution and the low resolution is because of the uh, wavelength use i mean the light or the optical light used in this uh, because as, as we discussed in the previous slide that is uh, wavelength is around uh, 400 nanometer and that limits the resolution of this optical microscope so we need to know some history about the electronic microscope and uh, this history shows that uh, the electronic microscope has uh, is developed stepwise and uh, according to the the, the Dennis Kober and the physicist Liu tried in 1928 to convince Bush to build an electron microscope and for that purpose they filed a patent and further development was made by a German physicist on Alaska and the electrical engineer Max Knoll constructed the prototype electron microscope in 1931 and the resolution of this uh, magnification and resolution of this uh, microscope was around 400 uh, power magnification. Further improvement was made by Rask. In 1933, he built an electron microscope whose resolution, uh, or I mean, so attained the resolution uh, with an optical microscope. In 1932, further improvement was were made, and some scientists, uh, Siemens, uh, has built uh, such type of uh, electron microscopes. Uh, the first practical electron microscope was constructed in 1938 by at the University of Toronto, and uh, a further improvement in the form of uh, because the elect uh, after the construction of the scanning electron microscope transmission electron microscope was introduced in 1939 uh, so again we need to know <coughs> why we, we use electron for uh, the electron microscopes uh, in that uh, optical microscope we have we had some limit uh, that limit was uh, due to the wavelength of the light used here instead of the light or instead of the electromagnetic radiations some particles are used and uh, among the particles electrons are used and why these particles are used we know from the well-known hypothesis of uh, de Broglie I mean the equation of de Broglie where he, where he had uh, argued that uh, the dual nature of matter that uh, with each moving particle a wave is associated and uh, uh, the wavelength associated with this particle when it is in state of motion that is equal to lambda is equal to h divided by p so h is actually a Planck constant so it means it actually depends upon the mass of the object and the velocity if the object has relatively bigger mass and the speed is slow so it will have very longer wavelengths so we cannot detect it so if we have a very uh, smaller mass and that is moving with very high speed so the, the wavelength is detectable so that is why electron is used for this purpose so if there is first electron the wavelength achieved will be short that is the uh, uh, that is something from the de Broglie equation uh, 
regarding the dual nature of matters. So how we can calculate the kinetic energy of elect accelerated electrons? It is very easy when we apply an electric field on the electron, it, it is accelerated. And the kinetic energy of electron is equal to E small e into u where e is the actually the charge on electron and u is the potential energy applied i mean that is actually the uh, potential difference applied to accelerate the electrons if you want to compare this kinetic energy with the normal kinetic energy that is equal to is equal to 1 over 2 mv square so we can replace mv by p so this equation will be equal to p square divided by 2 m so we can compare these two equation with each other this first one e kinetic energy is equal to e into capital u and the second one is e kinetic energy is equal to p square divided by 2m so what we will get we will get p is equal to 2m e kinetic energy under root and that is further equal to 2m e u so here if we put the value of p from this equation in the up equation of the Broly uh, equation so it will be like that that h uh, lambda is equal to h divided by p uh, that will be equal to h divided by 2 m e u under the root and that is around equal because the actually h is a constant quantity so this is almost equal to around around equal to 1.23 nanometer that is divided by u under the root that is the u is actually the external potential difference applied so uh, the wavelength achieved in this case will be in the uh, nanometer range that will be in nanometer range so here lambda is equal to 1 over 3 uh, nanometer divided by u uh, under the root and that is uh, from that we can calculate the resolution and the resolution for the equation for the resolution is equal to 0 0.6 lambda divided by n sine alpha that is from that we can get the resolution that is d is equal to uh, multiplication of this quantity with each other n sine alpha into u and that is that will be more uh, almost equal to 0 0.74 divided by alpha into u under the root nanometer so this is the half angle of lenses in electron microscope the, the actually the half angle of lenses in electron microscope is smaller that is alpha is equal to point 0 0.01 radian so the anti soft refraction that the value of n is around equal around equal to 1 so what will happen the resolution of conventional light microscope we cannot exceed then I mean less than two. So therefore, the resolution of accelerating voltage of 10,000 nanometer, when I mean 10,000 nanometer is used to find out the resolution. So we just need to put the value of u here. That is actually the external potential difference. So we can get the resolution that is equal to 0 0.74 nanometer. This is really very, very good resolution for an electronic microscope this is actually the structure of an electronic mi microscope we have two type of electronic mi microscope one is the transmission electron microscope and the other is the scanning electron microscope uh, in one case the the beam of electron transmit through the sample and it can get the information from the interior of the sample so that is why the sample prop preparation for TEM is very different from this from for, uh, for for TEM is different and for SEM is different the in case of SEM the electron beam scan the surface of the sample and the backscatter electron or the secondary electron are collected by the detector and get the information of it so this is actually different uh, this electron have uh, electron I mean the uh, SEM and TEM have some general part that are common to each other and this is actually uh, some of them are the electron gun just like electron gun is used for the production of electrons and then it is accelerated by some external potential difference and is it uh, further it is directed with the help of magnetic field and electric field and then some condenser lens to to direct the electrons on the objective lens and objective lens are to get the information from the reflected or transmitted uh, electron and finally the image is produced on the screen so we can compare the three 
microscope with each other. The first one is the optical microscope. It's really very simple. The optical microscope because the light from the light source falls on the object and that is reflected to our eye. We can get information from that and we can get information about the image of it, that, that object. And in the case of uh, electronic microscope, we have an electron source that creates the electron. These electrons are accelerated and directed on the condenser lens uh, further on the sample in case of TEM and in case of SEM it is uh, the condenser uh, finally for fall on the sample and it is reflected in the case of TEM it can transmit on the sample and it can get it it is achieved at the objective lens and finally we can get this image of that uh, particular samples so discussing the different part of electron gun the SEM and TEM the first part the first uh, 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 part is the electron gun I mean the electron gun is a basic part of the uh, scanning and uh, transmission electron microscope the electron gun is basically used for the production of electron we have three different ways to create the electrons and then uh, further we need to accelerate the electron when it is come out from the electron gun the first part uh, the, fir the first way to create the electrons are the thermionic emission in thermionic emission electrons are emitted from a heated wire and when it is emitted then due to the negatively charged well valence cylinder electron are only emitted from the tip of the wire the electron beam can be easily focused and the other uh, advantage of this thermionic emission is that the filament can be made made of tungsten or lb6 and the filament made of lb6 generates stronger currents the second uh, way in which we can create the electron or the scott cube emission and the magnitude of thermionic emission increase if the filament is negatively charged the filament must be heated to a lower temperature and the filament per square emission are usually made of tungsten covered by zirconium oxide and then in field emissions the negative voltage is applied to the cathode uh, that is large enough and electrons are emitted from it even without heating as a result of the quantum mechanical tunneling the field emission cathodes are made of tungsten so this is uh, a sample uh, image of the Electra of the electron gun in electron electronic microscope so once the electrons are produced the second process in the SEM and TEM, TEM is to accelerate the electron as electrons are negatively charged particles therefore we use basically external voltage uh, they are the potential difference to accelerate the electrons uh, <coughs> uh, for the acceleration of electron depends upon the potential difference normally to find out the kinetic energy of the electron that is equal to e small e into u that is external potential difference that is equal to 1 over 2 m naught v square where e small is the charge of electron u is the accelerating voltage m naught is the rest mass of electron and v is the velocity here in this case as we are increasing uh, where uh, we are at we are giving very high speed to the electron due to the high voltage or high potential difference so what will happens the uh, relativistic effect will occur so that is that is why we need to use the relativistic equation instead of the normal equation so there is there is some modification needed in the above equation so that a e small e into u capital u is equal to m naught c square divided by one uh, 1 minus v square divided by c square under the root and uh, here the gamma will be equal to 1 over uh, 1 over under the root 1 minus v square divided by c square and finally we can get the that uh, e into u is equal to gamma m m naught into c square and c is the speed of light and gamma is the relative relative increase in mass so the other part of the SEM and TEM is the electron optics. The emitted electrons that are produced and that are accelerated due to the uh, external potential difference, then it is concentrated on a particular point with the help of a condenser lens. So for that purpose, we need both electrostatic and magneto, electric, electric and magnetic field, and that is used to focus 
or direct the electron on a particular spot and the electric field used for this is uh, of circular shape uh, here you can see the shape of the object on which we apply the electric field so there is a cavity in the middle of the circular shape so the electron are deflected toward the middle of the cavity and it can travel in the middle of the cavity and in the magnetic lens uh, are used to direct the electron in a specific directions the force due to magnetic field is equal to f is equal to qv cross b or uh, f, it will be equal to f is equal to qv p sine alpha so with the help of coil magnetic field is generated and the magnetic field is used to direct electron in a particular direction so this equation is used for the direct that so the other thing is that we need to create vacuum in the systems in the uh, scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope we need to create a system there are four different methods used to create the vacuum in the uh, scanning and transmitted electron microscope the first process is the rotary vent pump in in this is a very simple process and the when i mean the rotary uh, vent pumps uh, is used to create the vacuum in in, in the second process there is a diffusion pump I mean, a diffusion pump is also used to create vacuum inside the uh, electron mic microscope this is the third part with the help of uh, turbo molecular pump we can also can because it's a uh, turbo molecular pump we can also create the vacuum in, in the interior of the uh, electronic microscope and the fourth uh, different technique to create the electron uh, the vacuum in the electronic uh, microscope are the is the oil pump so this is something about the uh, uh, some preliminary discussion about the electron microscope, optical microscope, scanning electron microscope, and uh, transmission electron microscope. The next slide, the next lecture, or the mm, the second part of this lecture is connected with this lecture because in that we will we will discuss the remaining. Uh, part of the electron microscopes and the advantages disadvantages the sample preparation for electron microscope and all other relevant things about the electron microscope scaling electron microscope and transmission electron microscope so for now this is the end of this lecture thank you very much